Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art, located here in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, uh, January 19th. I'm a little late getting this video out today. I was out on the road doing some things earlier today, but here we are. And last week there were some pretty nice things on eBay and they did quite well. And we're going to start, uh, get into it right away. Um, oh, before I start, uh, just a quick thing. We did another video earlier this week, as I mentioned last week, about this. This is a, a, a book on a Kangxi porcelain collection that I had the opportunity to go and look at a few weeks ago. And uh, this is it. And it's quite a collection. And uh, take a, check out the video if you have a chance. Uh, here are some of the things that are in the uh, collection. It's uh, one of the best Kangxi porcelain collections probably in the entire world about 700 pieces, and these are just some of the pieces. Uh, it's quite extraordinary. So check out the video from this week on it and uh, take, a, take a, a good look at it and consider buying this book. If you're a collector, it's pretty much a must-have. It's, it's well-written, and uh, you'll be glad you own it. All right, and now back to um, uh, this week's auction results on eBay. Uh, we had this. This was a, a really attractive uh, Famille Rose Bowl, uh, nice, nice big one. I think it was about 10 inches in diameter, 18th century bowl. And the seller listed it as 1850 to 1895 for some reason. I don't see how he came up with that date, but he did. And a few people noticed apparently that he wasn't quite accurate. It brought, still brought $710, but it was an older bowl. It was an 18th century bowl that he misdated. All right, so you got to watch for that. That happens on here sometimes. And then there was this. This was a nice jade pendant of a foo lion, beautifully carved, probably early 19th century. Could have been a bit older, but very nice quality, uh, beautiful quality, a nice color piece of jade it is. And uh, it did pretty well, but I, it, I think it was a, a relatively good buy. Um, it went for $1,596, which I don't think was an overpay for that. It was a nice piece of jade, good color, well carved, and nicely polished. And I thought it was quite nice. And uh, then there was this, this Kangxi style. It's a 19th century vase, but it's done very much in the Kangxi style. Um, and it has these sort of interesting black bamboo trees at the top, but the uh, palette and layout are typical of 19th century pieces. But when you flipped it over, the guy did show good clear pictures of it. This foot rim, this squared sort of gritty foot rim, um, the way this is done, and well, the enamels also were uh, not typical of Kangxi enamels. This is they're, they're a little too hard. Um, uh, the, the facial painting on it was fairly good, but the rest of it wasn't quite right. And the foot on it, the bottom, is a, a very typical late 19th century foot. Not not particularly well finished, not particularly fine, and this white glaze on the inside uh, indicates a later 19th century date every time. And uh, it did all right, nonetheless. It still brought $1,041. Uh, Arthur Potts had that uh, over in uh, Dorset in the UK. Yeah, as, as I've said before, he gets nice things. And then speaking of jade, there was this, this rather nice reticulated plaque um, with two immortals on it, uh, walking through a forest scene. This was a nicely carved piece, a nice little plaque. There's the back of it, it was pretty filthy. Um, but uh, there's a, an overall shot of the reverse. And here's a shot of the front of it. And, but nice quality jade again. Um, these plaques turn up fairly often. They're not particularly rare, but nice, always, not always, but usually fairly nicely done. And um, this one brought $1,525. For my money, I think the other piece was a better buy, the one of the Foo Lion, but um, uh, everybody has their own taste. And uh, then there was this bronze. This was that, that uh, sort of 18th century, we'll call it, uh, bronze. Might have been a little older. I don't think so. But it was done in the Sung style and uh, quite nice. And uh, it did uh, just fine. This was uh, the seller Egmont Horn had this. And it brought $1,570. This seems to be, so far, this is all, everything went for $1,500 last week. I wonder why. And uh, then there was this bottle. You remember this was the, uh, the uh, uh, transitional or uh, uh, late Ming uh, Wan Li bottle. Uh, nicely done, very well-known type. Had a fair bit of fritting on it, which uh, I think held the price down. This whole shoulder here was chipped out and all along down the side. Uh, unfortunately, the, these pieces, they're slab constructed, and when they shrink in the kiln, um, these panels retract and they cause blistering and popping of the uh, on the corners. And uh, nonetheless, it did pretty well. It brought about what I said last week it would bring. It bought $1,000, 700 pounds, and uh, perfectly nice thing. Nice old 
authentic piece. And uh, then there was this, this, this uh, horse and rider uh, plate with the, with the, uh, they're hunting uh, 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 rabbits or pigs or something. And, um, but a, a fairly nice outer border with uh, uh, auspicious symbols. Uh, you have the, the wheel, the endless knot and so forth, the, the canopy going around the outside. And uh, there's a picture of the bottom, just the way it should look. And uh, this is a nice size plate and it appeared to be in good shape. And it brought uh, $626. And just so you know, uh, Cellar Juice, uh, Chamberlain Antiques, has an auction starting tonight, the 19th, and running for 10 days. And I believe he has several of these plates also, this style plate. Um, I, I saw him earlier this week, and uh, he had some nice things. And I believe one of these plates was, or two of them were in this, in this mix. If they're not in this sale, they'll be in his next one, but check it out. And uh, then there was this. This was sort of a nice little buy. This was a sweet little uh, Wan Lee crack style uh, bowl, shallow bowl, but a very nice decoration, nice color. Uh, it wasn't particularly big. This was around five or so inches in diameter, but it had a nice color, perfectly good little piece. And uh, it went for a very reasonable price, $208. That's not bad for one of those at all. And uh, if, you, if you're shopping, if you're collecting on a bit of a budget, this was a nice, uh, authentic piece of Ming blue and white. Um, it was actually in the shape of a Clampets bowl, uh, Clampmutz bowl, um, but uh, uh, not a bad purchase. And then there was this plate, the one with the three fish in the center. And uh, this was a, a rather nice example. It was a uh, uh, not particularly high-end uh, Kung Shi piece, but but perfectly good quality with a, with a brown dressing on the rim. It had it did have a chip here on one side, but other than that, it was okay. And uh, it brought uh, $170. So again, if you're shopping on a, on a modest budget, you can find things on here um, that won't break the bank and are perfectly nice. All right. And then moving along to this, this was a, 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 a forget how they described this, if they said this was 18th century or 18th century style. 18, well, 18th century, the foot looks okay. Um, nice uh, prune, apple blossom jar, or prunus blossom jar, apple blossoms, I think. And uh, uh, good deep Kangxi uh, cobalt uh, color. It might be a little after that. It could be an 18th century pot, too. But uh, it did pretty well. It brought $1,325. Um, not a bad price for that at all. And then there were these, these nice little pair, good week for 18th century stuff. This was a nice little pair of uh, Kangxi uh, uh, jars or vases. They're, these were fairly small. And one of them over here in the upper left, you can see had a nick out of it. And there was a little abrasion of the rim there. But it's a pair and nice form with a splayed foot. And uh, here's a picture of the bottom. And it had an old label on there, Dickinson uh, and Company London sold them apparently at one point. And uh, they went for just $395. So somebody got a nice, uh, a nice little uh, purchase for themselves. And then there was this, the big Swato piece. This was a, I thought this was a good one. I thought this was a nice one. The enamels on these Swato uh, uh, pieces with this uh, iron red on them, often they're very worn in the center. The turquoise is nearly scraped off, and they, uh, they get a lot of wear for some reason. Swato pieces, because they were used so much. And this one looked quite intact and uh, in nice condition in, in the, uh, in the uh, Phoenix uh, standing up on the rocky outcropping was still there, all right? And uh, this one did pretty well. It brought $2,291, and I think largely due to its condition. It was in wonderful condition. And then there was this. This is, this is a 19th century, but Kangxi style Femi Ver uh, vase, but fairly good quality, nice quality to it. Um, has this these this like this leaf form cactus on it and these nicely done butterflies. Um, here is the uh, foot on it. Uh, it's not a Kangxi foot, but it's a nice old foot. This isn't a this isn't a new jar, and uh, it did pretty well. It brought nine hundred and ninety nine dollars. But if you can't afford the, uh, the the originals, this wasn't a bad purchase at all. Not a bad buy. And then you have this. This was the, I've been showing some metal works on here because there, there are other things in, the, in uh, Chinese art that go beyond porcelain, bronzes, jades, and silks and so forth. And um, this is a nice piece of pewter, possibly pak tong, with a very well done uh, uh, landscape figural scene on it. And this is the same sort of landscape scene that you often see on Kangxi and uh, um, um, late Ming dishes, these, these sort of pointy mountains. It's a popular motif, 
And uh, if you collect early 18th century pieces, you'll see it. And this was a nice, uh, nice example and uh, rather well done. Here's an overall shot of it. It looks like a tea bin. And here's the top of it with the uh, uh, peony and a bird on the branch. Very well done. And there's the, uh, the mark on it, probably out of Swato. And it went for $577, which I think is a nice buy. Um, these metalwares are suddenly get, get, seem to be getting more and more interest uh, because uh, the, their workmanship is being recognized. They're nicely done. And then there was this. This was a nice 18th century uh, sort of middle chin lung period uh, uh, gugglet, a bottle, uh, bottle vase uh, with a garlic mouth on it and a gilt rim. It looks like the gilding was uh, touched up. That doesn't look like the original gilding to me, but the rest of it looks pretty good. And uh, here's a picture of the base of it. Nice rounded foot, that nice creamy, uh, you know, sort of vanilla ice cream colored foot on there, which, which isn't bad to see at all. And here's the decoration, gilt highlights and so forth, and the lady's hair. And it did all right. It brought $1,121, and that, that's a perfectly reasonable price for that. Uh, nice piece, very Chinese taste. Um, they also made examples that were clearly only for export, um, that had Western scenes or Fitzhugh patterns on them, but that one was very Chinese. Uh, taste and its execution. Then we had this square uh, uh, shaped cornered uh, Kangxi bowl. This was a particularly nice one, uh, very well done. Uh, here's a picture of the bottom with the, with the Ming mark. Of course it isn't Ming, but very nice quality. This is a beautifully painted uh, bowl. Uh, very nice. It had this one tiny little nick out of the rim, which is not a deal breaker. There was no crack attached to it or associated with the chip, which makes a big difference. And uh, this was a good bowl, and it ended up doing quite well. It brought $2,605, which is, is not an overpayment for that. It's a, it's a good example with good decoration and good quality. Always pay for quality. And uh, then there was this, this moon flask. This was a little confusing to some people. It was illustrated, and it looked as though it was uh, a pair. It's not. It was, they just showed the front and the back. But uh, a nice, uh, typical late 19th century moon flask. Here's a picture of the uh, foot rim on it, if we can get it to come up. That's, that's very typical late 19th century work, sort of, especially for these, these moon flasks and vases, sort of flattened <clears throat> and um, not a pure white at all, rather, rather grainy and gritty. Um, uh, the, the porcelain quality at this time and most of these pieces wasn't that, that exceptional. Uh, they did a good job with the glazes though, but the, the base pot itself wasn't that, that terrific. And uh, it brought $612, which is right in the range that these moon flasks always seem to bring, unless they're enameled, then they bring quite a bit more. Uh, and this was nice. This was that dragon um, medallion um, that we, we had on the, on the newsletter last week. I think it closed on Monday. But this was a beautiful quality uh, piece of needlework, and it was looked to be in very good shape. It was still mounted on some sort of blue fabric, but the, the rondelle itself was just fine. And uh, here's a nice detail of it, uh, very good uh, stitchery all the way around, good colors, not faded, uh, with bats and precious symbols and, uh, you know, flaming pearls and all that business. And a lot of people apparently liked it. It brought $3,000, had seven bids, um, and a nice piece of silk. All right. And then this, this might have been one of the bargains of the week. We put this in there, but we don't put a lot of Japanese material in there because not a lot of interest in it these days. But this was a nice um, uh, piece of uh, gasu blue and uh, so forth satsuma, uh, incense burner, a box. And uh, it was in very nice condition. And it went very reasonably. You look at this. It brought $183, which is almost nothing for one of these. Very, very inexpensive. Um, I thought that was great. And uh, I hope somebody, I hope somebody that gets the newsletter bought it for that price, 183 bucks. And uh, then there was this. This was uh, something that Qing period uh, had up. It was a, a really nice um, Chin Lung marked um, enamel decorated uh, Peking glass snuff bottle. I'm not sure it was Chin Lung, but uh, very good quality decoration. And uh, the collectors really went after it, and I think largely due to the mark on the bottom. People will, sometimes uh, buyers in China will pay. Uh, top money for things with rain marks on them, even if it's not from that period. And this one went for $2,839. And then last of the sales this week was, was this, this rather nice uh, Hands of Buddha, a citron-fingered jade uh, with peaches on the side here. And the rather nice piece of jade, there's a few russet inclusions on it. 
but nicely done, probably an early 20th, late 19th century piece. And um, it went for $1,537, not an unreasonable buy. But I think for the Jades this week, my favorite was the one of the Foo line. I mean, these are all nice, and they all seem to bring around 1500 So for my 1500 I would like the little Foo line. All right. And then coming up, we still have some things on here. As you remember, um, uh, Ascot Court Antiques has some great things up. Um, and these are the things that will be in the newsletter this weekend. We have a few additions. It's kind of a quiet week coming up, though, other than uh, Chamberlain Antiques having some uh, 200 lots going up uh, this evening. Um, and this was a, a, a this is something that's still up. This is some uh, Ascot Court, rather nice jade uh, belt hook, and uh, it's up right now to six hundred and seventy six dollars. It ends on Monday, and they also have this jar, this eighteen uh, or nineteenth century jar, uh, beautiful quality, nice decoration, and uh, that also closes on Monday, and it's up to twenty nine hundred and fifty. It's getting right up there, but it's a desirable color and uh, has desirable colors and decoration on it. So there you go. And then you have uh, this. This is also theirs. This is a, a very nice Chin Lung uh, uh, dragon plate with um, a, a yellow dragon on it, obviously. And uh, here's the pearl and so forth. It's a well-known type of plate. It's had some restoration, apparently, to the rim, uh, fixing it, but beautifully done. Uh, some of the frits that appeared on these pieces from time to time. The same thing was they were problematic with Kang Shi uh, plates with dragons on them and so forth. They were often fritted, and sometimes you just see them polished. And uh, here's a photograph of someone holding it so you get a better sense of its size. And uh, this will do pretty well at the end. It's got 35 bids. It's up to 2550 um, but very nice example, all right? And then uh, there's this. This is a, a rather nice uh, Chin Lung period reticulated tray. Uh, here's the back of it. It's a nice period looking piece. Um, this is still up. This ends, I think, in uh, either tomorrow or Sunday. It ends Saturday. It's up to uh, $312. But if you like, um, it's, it's, it has the, this co- nice coastal scene with the boats. Rather nice. The off- same scene you see in paintings all the time. And uh, it'll be good to see how that does. But that's a nice example. And uh, 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 Migulari has that. He's a, a good sellover in, the, in London, in the UK. And that's it for the week. And uh, check out the, uh, the video on the uh, Kangxi collection I went to look at. And uh, uh, bookmark and uh, leave bids. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Sign up uh, here on YouTube and uh, sign up for the newsletter uh, notices over at bitamount.com. And uh, thank you all very much. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.